नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू इंडियन डिप्लोमेसी शो ऑन दूरदर्शन इंडिया नेशनल टेलीविजन चैनल अबाउट इंडिया फॉरन पॉलिसी इंडिया इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन एंड हाउ इंडिया इज अ गुड ग्लोबल सिटीजन एंड प्रमोटिंग ग्लोबल पब्लिक गुड्स व्यूअर्स इन दिस एपिसोड वी आर टेकिंग अप a very very important theme of indian foreign policy which is uh, its south south cooperation with the continent of africa the african union has 55 member countries and uh, it's a big uh, collective and uh, india has bilateral relations with uh, many of them at a very high level but then we are looking at the continent as a whole india's approach to africa and uh, what are its unique attributes and uh, the benefits that uh, india africa cooperation generates uh, for people of both uh, sides uh, and to discuss this i have a very uh, distinguished guest with me uh, joining us in the studio today dr rujita berry dr berry is um, a senior africa expert in india she is uh, worked uh, in the manohar parikar institute for defense studies and analysis for a long time and has headed the africa research and policy advocacy dr berry welcome to indian diplomacy thank you so much sri ram uh, dr berry when we talk about india africa cooperation uh, there are so many elements to it so many facets but uh, if you look at the big picture uh, how would you characterize india's approach to africa and south under the, under the south south rubric and what is distinct about it i mean prime minister narendra modi has outlined uh, some of our core uh, values and principles in kampala uganda a few years ago uh but uh, please tell the audience what is it that india um, does when it goes to africa when it engages with africa and what is the core uh, you know ideation behind india africa cooperation uh sri ram first of all let me share with you that india africa relations are very old they go back to ancient times you know there was contact between india and uh, africa some part of africa in the uh, indus valley civilization also that's how old our relationship is. so it's not new uh, but in recent years uh, we have been focusing on the fact that our relationship with africa is uh, based on a partnership mm. it is not uh, a donor client relationship in terms of development partnership it's something which is unique and the uniqueness uh, of the relationship is uh, emphasized i think by three points i would like to make about that you know that uh, there are three important features mm. and there are three c's of india's uh, development partnership i'm saying uh, development partnership because if you look at india's development cooperation with africa lines of credit as an important instrument of india's development cooperation with africa 40% of them are directed towards africa so obviously mm. africa as an important uh, area of cooperation now what are the three features that i'm talking about f- which make india's relationship or india's approach with africa mm-hmm. so unique first is that it is a policy which is based on consultation it is mm. consultative you know that uh, we say that our relationship with africa is based on their own priorities on the african countries demands mm. and here again i would like to uh, mention prime minister narendra modi during his address to the ugandan parliament in kampala he mentioned that africa will be our uh, our uh, partnership will be driven by the african priorities mm. and this is something which we have kept in mind uh, uh, we are looking at in each and every uh, uh, meeting that has taken place we have kept the african priorities in in place in that and uh, this is reflected in the fact that uh, africa we have said in the the india africa forum summit on 2015 that uh, that our partnership will be driven by the africa agenda 2063 which is which is a vision document developed by the african countries about how they want the continent to be in future mm. so so that's been our, our focus that we are looking at african demands and priorities sure. second important uh, feature of india's partnership development partnership in particular is that it is uh, based on capacity building mm. capacity building particularly human resource development we have focused on human de- resource development and again if you look at the uh, the uh, african plans and policies and priorities they also put uh, they also 
call about bringing a skills and education revolution mm. in Africa. That's what Agenda 2063 talks of. So mm. you know, there, there is uh, a, a kind of uh, parity between what India is thinking about mm. uh, uh, its approach to Africa and what the Africans want. Sure. So it is driven by, again, the African needs and also it is uh, focused on capacity building, human resource development, and uh, that that that's an important area within India's uh, development paradigm. Also, it has been focusing on skills enhancement, and in Africa also, it's it's doing that. Third is that India's approach to Africa is collaborative. Mm. That we are collaborating with African countries in building uh, their economy, in building their. Uh, uh, various aspects of uh, their life and uh, India has been, Indian companies have been, Indian government has been involved in in capacity building in various sectors in um, in collaboration with the African countries, whichever uh, area is priority for them. So whether right. it's health, whether it's, it's agriculture, whether it's uh, e-governance or, uh, or rural electrification, agriculture, India has been involved uh, in a big way in, in these African countries. And 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 uh, Dr. Berry, uh, going into the specifics, uh, Dr. S. Jay Shankar, India's uh, External Affairs Minister, has been saying that our current and future priorities in Africa are in three broad areas: uh, green, meaning uh, green energy and uh, you know green growth, and tackling climate change and those sort of issues. Uh, two, uh, health. Healthcare, and uh, the third is digital, uh, which includes you know digital services, uh, fintech, and uh, all these things. So um, these three uh, are the focus areas right now, and presumably going by the three C's formula you just mentioned, this is what um, African governments, African people, African uh, you know organizations and institutions are asking for uh, as their priorities or have identified them. So that's why uh, we are focusing on these, isn't it? Yeah. That, that, that's true. Uh, these are the areas which are priority for the African countries. This is what the African Development Bank says. And mm. uh, each and each of the African countries is also looking at these areas. COVID has made health a priority area for every country in the world. You know, they, they've realized that health is an important area where they need to expand their infrastructure, build their capacities, and Africa is no different. Mm. And uh, while India and Africa have been cooperating on health uh, issues for a, a very long time, it's nothing new. It's not just the COVID uh, that led to India's cooperation on health, but obviously it has escalated India's cooperation with the African countries on uh, the health sector. India is known as the pharmacy of the world, and yeah. uh, and uh, a large number of Indian companies are represented pharmaceutical mm. companies are represented in Africa and uh, um, so so uh, for the pharma and, and, sector and, and green green green, and uh, green again uh, given the fact solar that, electricity yeah, we've given been the doing fact a lot. that you know now the world is moving towards a transition towards greener development we yes. are focusing towards clean energy mm. so again uh, our focus is on solar development solar energy renewable energy of, of which India is the third largest power uh, uh, representative country in the world which has the and so many and so many African villages have been electrified for yeah. Indian solar yeah. uh, power generation you know. definitely India's um, uh, not just in terms of uh, the LOC projects which have been involved in um, setting up uh, manufacturing plants of for uh, solar uh, modules and others but also at a at a civil society level india's mm. uh, some of india's ngos have been involved in a big way in uh, lighting up africa yes. you know there there is the uh, the 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 project uh, which have been launched by a number of ngos in from india yeah in like barefoot college like the barefoot college yeah. Yeah. and 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 tech uh, tech is the new thing area tech, where yeah, you know, africa and india area. Can india has had a digital revolution. We have uh, uh, revolutionized the way we deal with uh, e-commerce or uh, with e-governance. Yes. And uh, these are the models which are uh, finding a lot of resonance in the African countries. And I heard a lot of the digital payment systems that we have designed have been adopted uh, across the continent. Many countries are interested, interested in the in India stack. 
yeah. uh, you know, open source software by which they can deliver, um, you know, welfare benefits to uh, the poor and those sorts That's of true. things. So these That's are really concrete things where India seems to be making a difference. So viewers, uh, there are the three C's, but there's also a lot of trade, uh, commerce and investment uh, between India and Africa and that's been growing and this is a, a healthy sign for the relationship. Uh, Dr. Berry was saying it's not a donor recipient relationship anymore and there is um, equal economic exchange between the two sides and it's growing. So on this, I have a video uh, about uh, trade and investment and what more India can do for Africa. Uh, from Dr. Chishom Ubabuko. He's a Nigerian economist uh, who teaches at OP Jindal Global University. Let's hear him and continue the discussion. India and Africa have always been friends, always been friendly, but this has been strengthened in recent times by the resolve of the current administration um, with the establishment of the India-African uh, uh, Summit Forum um, that has really helped to solidify this relationship even further. Um, India-Africa trade has been very robust, uh, worth over a hundred billion dollars. Um, this is not insignificant. It's quite comparable to India-American trade or India-European trade, for example. So in Africa has been a very good trading partner. Uh, India has done a lot, a tremendous deal in terms of uh, helping Africa's development. Um, for example, by extending lines of credit worth over 12 billion dollars. Uh, for the establishment of special economic zones and industrial sectors uh, in all kinds of knowledge transfers, uh, human capital development in the fields of business, entrepreneurship, education, healthcare, agriculture, so many different fields. So they've done a tremendous amount. Uh, more could be done perhaps um, in terms of the you know, physical infrastructure like highways, railways, ports, etc. This is one way to warm uh, your hearts into the African, <laughs> the, heart, the minds of the African people. Um, I also think that the reach could be improved. More African nations uh, can be reached and the impact of this development assistance can be felt in more areas. Also, in terms of knowledge transfers, especially in manufacturing and the entire manufacturing value chain that can also be improved. Um, if this relationship is strengthened, uh, India will benefit a great deal um, because Africa is a large market, a very extensive market. Um, Africa will also benefit a tremendous deal from the huge knowledge base that India has from its years of development experience, which has been exemplified by the wonderful way it's been leading the G20, uh, representing all of us in the global south. So, viewers, you got a small a snapshot of uh, various economic uh, areas where India and uh, Africa are cooperating uh, from Dr. Jishom Ubabuko. Uh, Dr. Berry, um, Dr. Ubabuko was talking about manufacturing in Africa. This has been one of the major concerns and the priorities for the African Union and for individual uh, countries as well because uh, they have been primary products based economies uh, largely historically speaking and for them to make the leap to manufacturing there is uh, you know India has been supporting uh, special economic zones he was talking about in a number of countries like Ethiopia for example and um, there is also um, you know, power uh, as well as fertilizer and such sectors where we have set up uh, actually help set up um, manufacturing and, uh, and, and processing right there in Africa. Uh, but that is seems to be like the next frontier where uh, India can support. Our investors are uh, quite bullish about Africa. Um, I was hearing uh, Sunil Bharti Mittal, the chairman of the uh, Airtel Group, which is operating in 14 countries in Africa in telecom sector. And uh, he was saying that uh, Africa is like the next bastion of global growth. And it's the fastest growing uh, you know, continent and with such a young demographic and there's huge anticipation that the middle class will grow from 300 million to 500 million or 600 million out of our total population of 1.2 billion on, on the continent. So um, from that perspective, uh, how would you see India's engagement uh, in trade and investment uh, and what more? I mean, the trade volumes have gone up now to almost $90 billion. Uh, and Dr. Ubabuko was saying that it's comparable roughly to our trade with uh, even the European Union or the US. So Africa is very important and uh, it's no less than any of the developed uh, you know, parts of the world for us uh, economically. And uh, Indian cumulative investments, I was looking up the data, is about $74 billion in the last two decades in, on the African continent. So our FDI has also gone in. And uh, of course, much more will be needed. So your thoughts on the economic, uh, you know, the core economic trade and investment and what more we can do uh, with the Africans? 
Yeah, but see, uh, Africa has uh, over the over the last two decades really uh, changed in the image of Africa has changed globally. You know, because uh, there was a time when people used to uh, call Africa as a dark continent, but now Africa is a rising continent, con continent with of hope, mm. continent of progress, and the fact that uh, among the ten fastest growing economies, five are from from Africa today, that's what the IMF says, uh, uh, shows that, you know, that Africa is is very different from what has been, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what has been uh, the traditional narrative that's changing now about Africa. If you visited the African countries, you could see the progress mm. in these countries. And therefore, uh, naturally, uh, you were saying that Indian businesses are interested. Def definitely, they know that this is uh, the the future continent. This is where uh, uh, the last bastion of economic growth, and we need to be involved in these processes. And uh, the other point which you uh, mentioned was about uh, India's now focusing on helping or supporting the African objective of industrialization. Yes. You know? So that I think uh, has been there uh, in India's efforts. In, in India's development uh, partnership also, we can s see that, uh, I can give you some examples from Africa. Yes. Like in case of uh, Ghana, the first uh, sugar factory was set up uh, with the support of India. Then secondly, India was involved in, uh, in uh, Djibouti for setting up their first uh, cement factory, Mauritania for the first uh, milk processing plant. So India mm. has been doing uh, a lot of things in Africa, some of them are not uh, known to a lot of people because India has not been advertising that in a big way, you know. It's only now that uh, we've, in the last five years, that we've had high level visits to Africa, which showcase the fact that India is interested in Africa. We have, uh, uh, you know, circumvented the, the visibility deficit that India had mm. for a long time with the African countries and which is very important. Uh, when you're talking about trade and investment relations, that if the government of the country showcases the fact that you know it is interested in engaging with with these set of countries, that that gives uh, the businesses also confidence to move in uh, into that sector, that that region in a big way. And mm. uh, I've been part of the CII Africa Country uh, uh, Experts uh, Committee for a very long time, and. Uh, the, the 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 business the India Incorporate has been very much interested in doing business with Africa for a long time, and uh, they are even now very much interested in enhancing their presence in in the continent. And and it's being facilitated. Our Exim Bank and all these play a big role in enabling yeah. uh, two-way trade and investment. Yeah, they started with the Focus Africa program. Uh, in the beginning of the century 2002 when uh, we said the government said that they will support the increase of exports to africa by by india and uh, subsequently all the various initiatives that have been launched uh, in terms of enhancing uh, india's trade with with the african countries or uh, india's economic cooperation with with african countries so many summits the all uh, we've We've had now a structured engagement with the African countries with the, the India-Africa Forum Summit starting in 2008 and the last one, 2015, we made it to, uh, you know, uh, we opened it to all African countries, all 54 of them. Mm. So, so it was not just the, uh, the government to government summit, but also the businesses from all these countries have been involved in a big way in, and they are interested in doing business with India. Why? Because they understand that the, the style of funk, of cooperation that India uh, offers to the African countries is unique. Yes. It, it's unique because we are transferring our model of triple uh, A model, which I say, you know, which is adaptable. We offer them technology, which is not offered by a number of uh, countries, which is affordable, which is adaptable. Mm. You know, so so yeah. the, these are uh, some of the reasons why Indian companies and are uh, very welcome. Absolutely. And in there Africa. are, we have, of course, other big powers, Western countries, China. I mean, many of them have done very controversial economic interventions in Africa, uh, you know, plundered the natural wealth and resources of the continent. And clearly, uh, our approach is quite distinct. And 
a different model altogether. So viewers, uh, India is uh, doing a lot of good and also receiving a lot of benefits from Africa. It's uh, mutually beneficial and that's an important point. Uh, but apart from economics, there's also peace and security. And this is one area where India has been a major pillar of support for African countries and African people over the years. Um, let's hear from uh, Ruchira Kamboj, India's permanent representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Ruchira Kamboj, talking about the India's approach to Africa's uh, peace and security. And we'll resume the discussion after this. Terrorist outfits like armed groups deserve the priority attention of the Council in their response to addressing security threats confronting Africa today. In the Sahel and throughout the Lake Chad Basin region, as well as in Somalia and beyond, African states face persistent threats of terrorism from groups affiliated with the Al-Qaeda and Daesh. National and regional security forces are the prime responders to combat terrorism. Capacity constraints and lack of financial resources have, however, become major impediments in the fight against terrorism. Initiatives such as ATMOS, the G5 Sahel Joint Force, the South African Development Community Mission in Mozambique, and the Multinational Joint Task Force need more encouragement from the international community. UN peacekeeping operations and special political missions in Africa need to be appropriately mandated and resourced. Our experience in peacekeeping in Africa shows that such missions often struggle to implement ambitious and under-resourced mandates. Furthermore, peacekeeping missions should have a clear and well-thought-out exit strategy prepared in consultation with national and regional stakeholders. Since the 1960s, Indian peacekeepers have served in 22 missions in Africa so far. Currently, Indian peacekeepers are serving in eight UN peacekeeping missions in the African continent. India has also contributed towards the training and capacity building of peacekeepers from Africa. India believes that Africa's rise is essential for true multipolarity in the global order that we are committed to. So viewers, uh, you heard from uh, India's permanent representative of the United Nations, Ambassador Ruchira Kamboj about um, the issues of peace and security on the continent and India's views, uh, India's preferences, both bilaterally and multilaterally, uh, how we can better secure and create stability and peace on the African continent. Uh, Dr. Berry, um, Africa has changed, but there still are uh, pockets on the continent where there have been persistent armed conflicts. And now this jihadist threat has also arisen and has grown especially after the Libya you know, collapse in 2011. The fallout of it has been pretty bad in the Sahel region and all that. Um, so India, of course, uh, there's a lot of joint um, uh, you know, exercises now we are doing with the African Armed Forces, the AF Index, uh, you know, military. We had, I think, more than two dozen African countries uh, jointly training with the Indian uh, Armed Forces. We do naval exercises uh, with the you know, number of countries, especially the ones uh, along the Indian Ocean coast, the eastern coast of Africa. Uh, we've done trilateral ones with Mozambique, with Tanzania and, and Kenya and all these countries. So um, obviously there's a lot of capacity building even in the security sphere that we're doing for African countries. Uh, but uh, of course, there's much more that we could do. And so your thoughts on the uh, peace and security situation there. I mean, there are foreign actors, external actors and interventions which have often uh, destabilized Africa. But India does not at all come with that intention or effect at all. So it's actually to counter the destabilization. So uh, how do you think uh, we have been doing on this front? Yeah, so you, uh, you're very right when you say that, you know, that uh, there are a lot of security issues which still continue in Africa. Con conflicts are still sim simmering in some parts of Africa, like in South Sudan or in Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, there are uh, terrorist groups which are uh, present in Nigeria, in the Sahel region, in North Africa, in countries like Libya. There are in... Uh, uh, in Horn of Africa, Somalia has, we've seen uh, the presence of terror groups there which have impacted the neighboring countries like Kenya and Uganda. Mm. And uh, 
in southern Africa, we have the emergence of uh, a few years back another terror in, in Mozambique. In yeah. Mozambique, yeah. you know. So, so, uh, so terrorism is something. Countering terrorism is something which is common between India and and African countries. The other common threat is that of maritime uh, uh, insecurity, whether it's maritime terrorism, whether it's piracy, whether it's drug trafficking, and other issues of maritime nature uh, or illegal fishing which mm. in which uh, India and uh, uh, and the African countries share a common concern. So, so these have led to uh, in an enhancement of India's cooperation in security area with the African countries. Traditionally, uh, I would say the, the focus of India's uh, security cooperation or defense cooperation with the African countries countries has been uh, on human resource de development. That mm. has been the buzzword of India's uh, partnership with the African countries. It's similar in the security field. You, If you recall, the former president of Nigeria was trained in in uh, one of our uh, training Military institutions. Military academies, yeah. Uh, and similarly, uh, the former leader of Ghana, you know. So, so mm, there have been a history of cooperation between India and and the African countries in terms of uh, uh, support that India has given in, in enhancing the capacities of the, the, uh, the African defense officers, cadres. Uh, we've also sent training teams to, to some of the African countries, uh, military training teams, so yes. whenever they have desired uh, that, that their presence is needed, uh, right. and uh, also help them set up the the defense, national defense colleges in some countries. That's right. Uh, and even Ethiopia. forensic uh, university, there's a new yeah. one that Dr. Jay Shankar has inaugurated, inaugurated in uh, Uganda. Yeah, that's the first for India. For policing and crime and all these things. Yeah. So, security sector is uh, one area where, you know, India and Africa face challenges and there are uh, ways by which India is continuing to try and build the capacities of uh, our uh, African sisters and brothers so that they can live uh, in more peace and uh, stability. Um, viewers, you heard from Dr. Ruchita Berry so many you know, facets of India's cooperation with Africa. Uh, do think about the three C's that she has mentioned uh, and how uh, India is a force for good and is partnering with Africa in the best traditions of South-South cooperation. As G20 president uh, also, uh, we have consulted a lot with the Africans and brought their concerns to the table uh, of the major economies of the world so that uh, African voices and African uh, concerns uh, do not remain neglected. I want to thank Dr. Ruchita Berry for sharing important insights and for letting us know about uh, you know the future of this uh, important uh, close collaboration with Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Shia. Uh, viewers, uh, Africa is important. That's the biggest message uh, of the show and the discussion. Uh, do not underestimate Africa. Africa is rising and India is there uh, shoulder to shoulder. Continue to follow this relationship. I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care.